Hi, gang. We're going to go over Brockenbrenner's bioecological theory, go through all the levels, talk about various details along the way. Key part with Brockenbrenner's theory is that the person is part of their overall experience. You cannot look at the environment around the individual without considering the individual as a part of it. That's why in the picture on the right, with all the circles surrounding the individual in the middle, the individual in the middle is key. Pull out the person in the middle, the theory falls apart, the information about the person falls apart. Uh, so you start in the middle and you work your way into the outer rings. Also, the further you get away from the person, the more complex the interactions are in the system. So we'll start right away with the microsystem. In the microsystem, this is where you have regular interaction with other people. It can be similar to the picture on the top left, which is a person with a bunch of friends. It can be um, the picture on the right, which is family. It can even be the picture on the bottom left, the people that you go to school with. So where do you have regular interaction with people? That's a microsystem. Now. Each one of these microsystems are separate worlds for the individual. I'm sure some of these sound familiar. Hanging out with friends, hanging out with your family, hanging out with people at school, hanging out with people at work. Now, the mesosystem is about the interaction of two of your microsystems. It's basically being able to juggle multiple worlds that you exist in. For example, the cartoon on the left with the lady who is juggling uh, PDA, which is work. She is juggling uh, beer and pizza, which is eating. There's books and pencil, which means she's juggling going to school. Uh, the pillow, she's juggling bedtime. So all of those worlds where she has a lot of things going on, she has to figure out how to make them mesh, hopefully not have them clash. Uh, the jester on the left Two of the things he has there is life and work. That's something that gets talked about a lot with people as they enter careers. How are you going to juggle your personal life, like family, like friends, like children, like church, shul, or mosque, and your work responsibilities? That's your mesosystem. That's where you are juggling two of your personal worlds, making them work together. Now, as we continue further out in the exosystem, it's still about two microsystems interacting, but only one of them is yours. Like the picture on the left where there is a man sitting at a table set for two, but he's all alone. I'm sure most of us have encountered issues where you've made plans with a friend, made plans with your partner, and their work schedule has changed, so they cannot meet up with you. Your schedule is free and clear, you can meet for dinner. Theirs is not free and clear. So that's the interaction of those two microsystems. Uh, snow days, they're classic uh, up here in the Northeast. Um, here, a lot of parents struggle with what am I gonna do about my work responsibilities, which is their microsystem, and how am I gonna help my kids who don't have to go to school because in their microsystem, they don't have to go to school that day. This is presuming that the parent doesn't teach at the same school where the kid is going. But right there, that's a conflict of two microsystems, but you as the parent only have the work microsystem that's being interfered with because of the snow day school microsystem of your child. Now, the largest ring Impacting the individual is a macro system. That's society. What are the influences of society where you are? And if you'll notice, as we've been going along further and further, the influence is becoming less and less direct. Here, the macro system, the influence of society, in order to impact you, has to drill all the way down to your micro systems. So there's a lot of filtering going on. So the microsystem is more influential than the macrosystem, but still the society where you are will impact how you 
perceive things, your attitudes towards certain things, what is and what isn't acceptable behavior. And I have the United States there on the left because we have our own set of national attitudes, which if you look at the picture on the right, which is a picture of the world, some of our attitudes are in conflict with the rest of the world and how they view things. Now the last influence on us, which is our chrono system. This is the course of our lifespan. What has happened to you over time that's going to influence you? And this applies to all the levels. What has happened to you personally that has a significant impact on your microsystem? The picture here, which is inventions since uh, 1837 up until 2001, how has that changed the world? And how has that impacted you, society changing, impacting you? Uh, at the bottom, if you can see the blue line, that is the grandmother. And if you see the pe peaches line, that is a grandson. There's a little bit of overlap. But look at the influences on the grandmother. Do you think that being alive and seeing the invention of the car, seeing a rocket go to the moon, do you think that's going to have an influence on how you have developed versus being born after man has already been on the moon but while the technology revolution with computers has been going on, would that influence the way you develop? So that's Brenner's system. Start at the middle, work your way out. Thank you. Bye.